My name is Martin McLean and I work for the National Deaf Children's Society where I lead on post-14 policy and practice. We are a children charity but we support young people up to the age of 25. That is young people with all levels of deafness from mild to profound. Our vision is of a world without barriers to deaf children and young people. Deafness in itself is not a barrier to higher education. Thousands of deaf people complete higher education every year. I got an undergraduate degree and two postgrad qualifications. I don't think I would have achieved those without adjustments being made by the universities and colleges that I attended and communication support being put in place through Disabled Students Allowances. Right now, it's a very challenging time for many of us as we adjust to the new world that we find ourselves in. Many higher education providers have been gradually providing more and more learning opportunities online over the last few years, so we're able to respond quickly to the lockdown by providing remote learning opportunities. However, for deaf students, having to access a lecture or seminar online does present new issues. Have you ever tried lip reading someone off the computer screen? Particularly if the picture is a bit fuzzy or jerky. I can tell you it's difficult. Often lectures are captured where you only see the slides so there's no one to lip read anyway. Subtitles are often non-existent. I recognise it is not always that straightforward to add subtitles, but technology is making this much easier than it used to be. Okay, so now we're talking about automated subtitles using speech recognition technology. Remember, this is not yet some magic solution. Automated captions are far from 100% accurate. It can be hard work for a deaf student to filter out errors and there is a real risk of misunderstanding important concepts being relayed by a lecturer. Even a small grammatical error can result in reading a sentence in a completely different way. Some universities are trying automated captioning at the moment. The key thing is that the subtitles are edited. Any automated captioning platform should enable subtitles to be edited easily after they have been created using the voice recognition technology. If errors are not edited out, you haven't really got an accessible lecture. If good quality subtitles cannot be made available, then you may need to be discussing with a deaf student putting in place a speech-to-text reporter or electronic note-taker for lectures. Over half of deaf students do not claim disabled student allowances to cover the cost of their support and it is not necessarily because they feel they don't need it. It is these students we are particularly concerned about at the moment. Late applications for disabled student allowances are permitted and it's probably reasonable for higher education providers to cover the cost of communication support whilst an application is going through. What about if you use sign language. Many British sign language interpreters have been able to provide interpretation of lectures and seminars remotely. However, there can be issues in accessing live seminars and discussions if the picture quality is not good enough. If using a video platform like Zoom or Microsoft Teams, you need to be able to pin the interpreter easily so that they can be visible on the screen for the whole time. It's good to be aware that concentrating on 
I sound like this interpreter for some time and trying to read slides and messages within the chat function can be very tiring. Uh, there's a lot of um, visual information to be processed. Breaks are therefore important. UCL have come up with some very useful guidance on remote working with sound language interpreters which can be downloaded from this link. Some, not all, but some deaf students will appreciate good quality audio input when accessing a seminar or lecture. If it's a lot of background noise or rustling, you're making it much harder for a deaf student to listen. For tutorials, flexibility is important. Deaf students have different needs to each other. Can you use a video call rather than a phone call? If a video call is difficult for a student, then what about chatting through text? If you use automated captioning, for example, on Skype or Google, remember to open them up yourself so you can see if there are any glaring errors in the captions. Online exams and assessments. Oral assessments must be discussed with the deaf student to find the best arrangement to make sure they have full access. With written exams, the normal access arrangements that the deaf student would have, such as extra time, modified language or British Sign Language interpretation, must be reflected within the alternative arrangements. And finally, with most providers taking a blended learning approach in the 2020-21 academic year, it is important that higher education providers are taking steps to address issues that arise from this. Remember, no one deaf student is the same. Access needs will vary from student to student and good communication with the student about what works for them and finding time to review things and how they are going is important. The guidance in this video can be found in written form here. This link. For further advice, deaf students and higher education staff are able to contact our helpline in a variety of different ways. Visit www.ndcs.org.uk slash helpline. Thank you.